Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Just gonna um, hopefully fill in some more gaps like I, I try and do each live. Just keep filling in more gaps, answer more questions that I get asked on comments that are too long to respond. <clears throat> Good morning to everybody who's just joining. Just gonna cover these three topics because they're they're what's being brought up over and over again on my Facebook. So I'm just going to cover these few topics here. But I'm seeing a lot of people on YouTube and a lot of people on Facebook with the assumption that reincarnation is a choice. And this is not the case. We weren't in this conscious body through, through my title name, Tyler, I did not choose nor tell myself to come and reincarnate or come and be born into this reality. So reincarnation is not a conscious choice. What, we, what it literally is, is the universe becoming conscious of itself. And we don't have a name for ourselves but behind consciousness. Love you, Corey, bro. Miss you and, and everybody, bro. Miss you and, and the family and everybody. Hope everybody's good. Reincarnation is not a choice, though. It's not a conscious choice. What we're, what we're giving these title names, which is ourselves, is, is consciousness itself. And we're not, we're not a title. Just the same way God is, is not a title. What we're giving this name of God is a title. And everything we're searching for of this, of this proof of God is at the vantage point of, of where we're already looking out of. So everything we're seeking is already at the point that we're looking out of. And this is why it's so easy to get misled and brought into the material world. This is why it's so easy to be misled with the idea that materials will bring you happiness. Because it's convenient for the now, but you're feeding your spirit with materials and your spirit knows materials rot. All things of the finite world in a form are in the process of constant decay. They're rotting. And when you try and feed the spirit materials, temporary items, you, you become depressed. <clears throat> and it isn't the people who, who continue going deeper into the materials that finally hit this point of... of ultimate depression and there's only one way out and a lot of us say that there is no way out of this reality there is and it's very it's very obvious there's one way out and it's for you to take your own life there is a choice everything is a choice you don't have to be here we're not trapped here reincarnation is not is not a choice but it's also not as scary as, as we're making it seem through the conscious mind what we have to remember is all of our fears that are attached to the conscious being which is the 10% of the brain you're using. This is the only 10% of the part of you that you're aware of. All of these fears that we hold on to during this temporary vessel die with us when we pass. So anything that you're worrying about, anxious about, the constant fear of non-existence or dying and going nowhere is all a human construct in your mind. We're only the universe experiencing itself. So the idea of constant non-existence is an illusion. It's a human idea. It's created through the, the temporary mind. So we're worrying ourselves about absolutely nothing. <clears throat> 
With all things, though, one must find a balance. So I'm not telling people not to have fear, but to know when to be afraid. Yes, it's good to have fear in the sense of you know something bad is coming. You, you can sense danger. It's a, it's a natural instinct. But one must balance the, the, the emotion of fear. One cannot be bound behind fear. And this is what I mean every time I speak about fear. Because I have a lot of people saying, well, then you're a robot. And yes, you are. This is why I stress. There has to be a balance. Because when you live too much in the subconscious mind, which is the, the Christ consciousness that everyone's trying to reach, this higher being, which is only the realization of yourself, that's all Christ consciousness is, is the realization of yourself. You are your own savior. There's nothing else that can save you. And this is why I tell people, happiness comes from within yourself. So if you're miserable inside yourself, there is no person, no place you can ever go to escape your own prison. There's no place that will cure your own depression or whatever that's not giving you happiness. There's no person or place that can cure that. There's no person or place that can bring you that. It's not a place or a person. Happiness is a state of mind, and it's it's an understanding within your own self. And you don't reach the pure state of happiness. Like when we were a child, kids are, are the happiest because they're they're it's before adulthood and money and all these things that aren't important have 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 the chance to have influenced them. Kids are seeing life in purity as, as it is. Life is magic. That's, this is why we see kids dancing around in just in the air for no reason. And we're staring at them and we're smiling and you know, oh, that's cute. But we don't realize these kids are dancing for joy for the simple fact of being alive. A kid is seeing the world and experiencing life for what it is. It's magic. And this is why I say... Be the kid who's dancing in the middle of an empty room for no reason because it's magic. People think, oh, life is boring or I'm tired of this or I'm... Everything we're worrying about is, is not important. And this is why we get so lost in our character. The character doesn't matter. You're not the character. The character is the 10% of your brain and it's the only part of yourself that you've ever known. This is, this is why it's called a matrix, because we are born into the matrix. Reincarnation is not a choice. However, the matrix is also not a choice either. We're born into it. I've also heard some people saying that we, we, we have a choice. We don't. We're born into it. As soon as we're born, before we can even consciously think for our own selves... As a baby, we're granted a title name. Right off the bat, we're granting this conscious being a title name. And as soon as you give it a title name, you start becoming the body, the illusionary being. And then you get lost and caught up as, as you get travel through adulthood. You start seeing in middle school, you start seeing all the cooler kids have the, the better brands. All the cooler kids have this. So then one must be like these people. It's about materials now. You have to have the best shoes, the best clothes, because this is what you're witnessing is getting other people notoriety and popularity. So it's an illusion of materials. One is dragged into the matrix at very early stages. It can be for many reasons. But we're led outside of ourselves instantaneously through brands, through titles, corporations. We don't have a choice. Television, music especially, music especially. <clears throat> All these billionaires, they have their kids listening to instrumentals, jazz music, pianos. There's, there's very important art behind the, the keys in music. And what you find is that the keys in music form sacred geometry patterns and geometric shapes. There's a reason our kids get the Cardi B's and, and then the Futures and all these people who are not promoting anything but garbage. The billionaires who run the world have their kids listening to Mozart.
Miles Davis, people, people like this. Instrumentals, jazz, music. Not music that makes you aggressive. Music that makes you aggressive for absolutely no reason. Music that makes you hate your neighbor for absolutely no reason. There's a, a very specific agenda behind a lot of the music that's put out nowadays. And if you notice, none of it's teaching love. None of it's speaking of love. It's making you hate each other for absolutely no reason. There's a reason for it. But I'm not going to talk about music. I'm not going to get sidetracked. <clears throat> this is one of the just many avenues of the matrix. It's also nowadays you got it's worse for kids because they've got social media. So they're growing up in an era where everything's being compared to the next. And this is where it's the most easy to slip away into the character into the temporary person you're seeing in the mirror. Us getting lost in this character is the, is the reason for our misery. It's once you realize you are creating your own misery, you are in control of every single thing around you because every single thing around you should be looked at as a mirror. The one you're looking at in the mirror who I'm looking at right now is not who I am. And I say this to myself every day in the mirror to humble myself and take myself out of the character. Because it's very easily when you go to work, when you go out, to slip away back into the character. And as I said, you must balance the two. The subconscious with the conscious. When I say character, I mean the conscious mind. The conscious mind is the 10% of our brains we're using the subconscious mind is the 90% of our brains that we we're not using because we're unaware. We're born with two identities. If, if anybody on this live has seen Shutter Island with Leonardo DiCaprio, Shutter Island, he's living two identities unawaringly. This is the reality of, of our, our life. He's completely unaware of one identity, and obviously one is an illusion. He's, he's dreaming. But this is all life is. You're fooling yourself. He's a, he's a mental patient at an institute. However, he's dreaming that he's an, he's a marshal there that's going there to investigate. He's he's investigating the his own mental institution that he's a um a, a patient to. And he's only dreaming that he's this marshal. And when he's dreaming, there's one patient missing. What you don't realize until the end is that one patient is him and he's not the marshal. He's the patient inside the ward. It's the same thing with reality. You're born only knowing one part of yourself, which is the character, the veil, the, veil, the character you're living behind, the title that we were given at birth. So I'm Tyler. I can be nothing other than Tyler. When I look in the mirror, I see Tyler. And this is how we get so lost in the character. Because you're magnificently tricking yourself and logic is not your friend on this. Logic will tell you that you are nothing other than the body. And this is where you're fooling yourself. Because you find after staring at yourself in the mirror and everything you're defining about yourself, you still have a, a, a sense of, of wondering, who am I? And it's always the same question, who am I? And it's because it's not the veil you're looking through in the mirror. As I said, everything we're searching for is, is right at the point that we're looking out of. All we must do is close our eyes and look in. And this is where we're being tricked by religions. When we pray, we're, we're unconsciously praying to ourselves. We're closing our eyes which then puts us looking in. So we're looking in and we're speaking to God, which hears you any place you go because it's in the mente, the mind. And it's you're talking to yourself. You're praying to yourself. You're looking in at your own self. This is why you close your eyes when you pray. However, as I said, we're unconsciously talking to ourselves. So when you become aware of who you're talking to, 
you can now begin to, to properly consciously pray. You realize you're not praying to a deity outside of yourself and you're not just some, some character, some human being that has no control. God's name in the Bible was I am that I am. I just posted a status this morning. Nobody else can say I am for you, but you, I am. And the battle of angels and demons is just in the conscious mind of the, the conscious person. What we are, all we are, is this one spiritual being of energy, whatever you want to call it, reincarnating into itself over and over again, living through different veils, different characters. It's none other than a movie. This is what you find when you finally wake up. You realize that <clears throat> these characters that we create through movies, when you get to the root and you ask yourself, why as humans, why are we creating movies for, as human beings? Why do we create movies? Why do we create games, alternate realities? And it's very simple. We're, we're giving ourselves entertainment. How else does one, being as formless energy, live or experience eternity? I say this all the time. There's only one way to experience energy. And the universe around, everything outside us, when we look up at the sky, is this energy. The sun, the moon, the stars, it's all this energy. And so what we're, what we're, we're doing is we're looking up at ourselves from a smaller perspective. This is all energy. And there's only one way to, to experience the energy. If this wasn't here... Or if, if the conscious person, the observer, wasn't here, then all this energy would be pointless. This is the point of consciousness itself. We're experiencing the world around us, the universe. However, we're convincing ourselves that we're not the universe, we're this small body. However, we are the universe, we're the spirit having or, or coping with a human experience, a human awakening. We're awakening as a human we're understanding the concepts of what it is to be human, what it means to be human. We can we can break it down and say a human has you know this much protons, this much atoms and this many uh, molecules and all that you can break it down but that you just you're understanding you're doing exactly what God would be doing. You're analyzing exactly what it is to be human. You're noting and making record of, of your findings of what it is to be human. And the people after you are reading about these things, just as we're reading about these things on the internet. But what you find is you're only reading about yourself in a past veil. All is one being of this energy reincarnating. So you're reading about yourself, stuff you found in your past life. And so you've, you've passed on from that conscious body and you were birthed into this conscious body whatever your name is. However, that's not who you are. We're only learning about ourselves. There is no name for, for God. There is no name. Consciousness itself is God, and we're, we're the universe witnessing itself. This would all be pointless if there was no conscious observer to take it in. This was the point of life. This is the very point of life. A lot of people say that this is this is horrible because there's so much misery and pain and suffering and, and that this can't be this can't be life, this can't be real. What what DMT shows you though is yes, there will always be murder, there will always be evil. Just as where you have good, you have evil. You have the sun, you have the moon, you have the dark, you have the light. There will always be one of the two. There are two planes of energy and there will always exist two. No matter how much love you try and create, there will always be two planes of energy of life and death, male and female. It will, it's natural. So what one must do is realize this and let go of all that you cannot, ex you cannot handle, you cannot influence. Some things are beyond our control. And if you, if you let it control you emotionally, things that are truly beyond your control 
you will dwell in your own hell and you will only see the miseries in the world. You will see the world as a, a terrible place. Through choice itself, we have the most powerful action in the universe. By choice, we are creating the universe. This, is, this isn't a created universe. This universe is being created. It's creating itself. We are creating the universe as we go. Through conscious thought, we're shaping the future, shaping what is to come. And when you know who you are, you know how to properly, consciously think. It starts with knowing who you are. And another thing I want to stress, this has to do with the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records are, are these mental records are, are, are records of every single person past life. Every past life anyone's ever had, is, is your memories are stored in the Akashic Records. And I hear this question asked all the time, and I really want to answer this question. I really want to cover this because I don't think people understand. So many people ask who was i in a past life who was i who what was i reincarnated as what was i incarnated as as previously who was i and what you're not understanding if you still have the question then you really don't understand fully yet who you are because once you know who you are the question is not who was i in the past you're seeing they're all you. There is only one. This is what DMT shows you. This is why some people fight this because they're so terrified of themselves. You're fighting your own self. You're fighting that it could just be you. And it is. It's one playing of energy, playing with itself through multiple conscious beings. And we're granted this illusion of separateness uh, through, through individual perception, through individual bodies. However, we're all connected to one. And perception, individualism, the illusion of individualism is what makes life so magic, so grand. So many people say, well, that's dumb. If it's everyone's me, then what's the point? Well, everyone's you in the sense of energy, not consciousness. Not, not through perception. That is, the, yes, free will. That is, the, that is your, you being able to choose. Free will. You're perceiving things different than the next. So nothing is predictable. Yes, you know that this is you. Yes, I know that you are me and I am you. But you don't know what I'm going to say and I don't know what you're going to say. It's unpredictable. This is the beauty. This is the magnificence of the illusion of individual perception. We are everybody. However, we're only tricking ourselves through the conscious mind. It's still unpredictable because we don't know what the next person will do or say. And this is why it's so magnificent. We're literally one energy, different consciousness. A different conscious part of the mind. Everybody has the same subconscious mind in their, in their brain. This is why everyone has, has access to the Akashic Records, because the Akashic Records are inside the brain. And it's a, it's, a, it's a metaphoric term for remembering your past lives, everyone's past lives and memories inside of this mental record. But all it simply is, is you realizing who you truly are. Because once you realize who you truly are, you have full knowledge to, to every past life. You realize they are all you. And anytime you're looking up somebody on the internet, you're reading about, male or female, your own self in a different veil, only discovering and getting lost in the mysteries of life again. And each person that's making their, their recordings of what they've found is so that us again, when we die, we can reincarnate and have a better understanding of what we were previously. And that's all we're doing. That's all this is. We're perfecting it each generation. But what the elites are trying to do is, is diminish this, get rid of this. And this is why they use the symbolic third eye, which I have covered. They use the symbolic third eye as, as 
their symbols. They speak through symbolism. And they mock us with it. They mock us with the third eye because we don't know who we are. And so we're dwelling in misery. We're dwelling as, as this poor little me. Why is the world, why is it me against the world? We feel like the weight of the world is on our shoulders. Why? Because we're living through the temporary character. That is not important. It is the dream. You are a part of this dream. There is no Tyler. There is no whoever. There's only us beyond the veil. This is why we die and we rot, because we are not this, this veil. We're energy, only temporarily being suspended into a, a form. And beyond this form, we have no, no indefinite shape or, or definition. No human can put to words what we are. God does not ju do it justice. The word God is a title word for us trying to understand consciousness and what we are beyond that. This is where the human mind will fail because God, this energy, is infinite and we, we, through the conscious mind, are bound through time, through constant decay, through death. Death is a certainty through anything that has a form. Anything taking a form, a shape, anything physical, is in constant decay. So we don't understand what the, the meaning of infinite means because infinite means no beginning, no end. And this is another thing. Every single thing that the human mind is, is creating and trying to understand is an illusion. This is what we don't understand. It's us trying to understand and we're only putting defining words to things that help us understand what we're talking about. Us giving definitions to what things are is not what they are. It's us understanding the reality. However, they're no more real. What we're defining is no more real than the, the temporary veil we're living in. When we die, we rot just as everything in form rots. So us speaking and defining things, it's solid or it's this or it's, it's this, this tall, this big, whatever. Us defining things is, is human, a human construct. It's a part of the illusion. It's not real. So death is not real, life is not real, a beginning is not real, an end is not real. These are human consumptions because we're only confined to beginning and end. In this skin, excuse me, all we know is beginning and end. A song, a movie, anything we do has a beginning and an end. We, we, we wait for a family vacation beginning and end. Everything we do has a beginning process and an end process. So we're confined through beginning and end. Again, part of the human mind. They're not real. They don't exist. So the, the meaning of infinite means no beginning, no end. And the human mind will never, never, ever be able to understand that because we are under the basic assumption. Our logic will tell us every single time it's impossible that something has to be created has to be started. And so we'll fight this very answer to the death because we're not understanding. Beginning and end only exist through the conscious mind. Just as our fears only exist through the conscious mind. And when we die, they pass with us. Every, every, everything we ever defined in our life, every single book, any note we've ever taken, goes. Because it's not real. It's a part of the illusion. It's a part of the dream. And this is why there truly is nothing to be afraid of. You don't ever have to live out your worst fears. Ever. Let them go. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. We might as well let go of all that we have no control of. And we have no control of reincarnation. It's a fact. We can... We're not stuck here. We can choose the easy way out and kill ourselves. We're not stuck here. Imagine a reality where we couldn't kill ourselves. Imagine a reality of that. No escape. That is a prison. That is a hell. The choice of at least escaping, it sounds bad, but the choice of at least escaping proves we're not stuck here. We have the choice. And by choosing, 
we are the I am. Just as we have the choice to take a life or to help save a life, create, build, instead of destroy, we have the choice to bring heaven or to bring hell because now here is all we have. And this is what people don't want to accept. This is why people choose religion because we don't want to accept this is all we have here and now. But when you realize that, it makes everything more sacred, more special, more meaningful, more appreciated. There is nothing after this in the conscious mind of your body. Accept that part. Also realize that you are infinite. So this isn't who you are. Yes, you're mourning the loss of your body, accepting the fact that this is not who you are, the character you've hidden behind your whole life, the the only thing you've ever known. It's hard to accept at first, but once you do, you're realizing you've only shorted yourself. You're putting yourself as this little me instead of that. That in which you're trying to define. That in which you have been searching for your whole life. It took me a while to accept it, and then I finally realized we are. We're shorting ourselves. We're wishing we were this temporary body that dies and rots instead of being it. This very being we're calling God. And this is, religion makes it so, it's the greatest sin to portray yourself as God. But again, we're, we're, we're thinking of God, we're portraying God as a being, in a form. And this is why the, the term God is so mis, misused. It's so misunderstood because we're picturing a person when we hear God. When you hear, when you hear the word God, you should think of the energy, the universe around you, the voice inside your head nobody else can hear. The voice that talks to you and tells you right from wrong inside of you. The voice out loud, the voice I'm speaking with, is a part of the illusion. It's not real. It's not who I am. Just as this physical character outside of myself, this is not who I am. But this is what we must realize. We can't, we can't, I tell this all the time. We can find our balance with fear, but when we start living in confinement, this is when we must take over fear. We must finally attack fear. Get to the root of what fear is and realize it's, it's not real. Fear is no more real than the dream you had last night. You won't ever have to live in that dream. It's not real. It was an illusion. Just as your fears are, they're an illusion. You don't have to ever live through them. You don't ever have to suffer through them. We we can't ever confine ourselves through fears. Because the point of, of living is to simply live, explore, get lost in mysteries, analyze things. And the deeper you, you sit there and analyze things and look up and you're looking up at the stars and you're like, wow, this is magnificent. What am I looking at? What are the stars? What is this? This is the very nature of being it, of being the stars above from this small vessel and asking the very question of what are these stars? That's what we don't realize. We're looking up at this magnificent ex- creation above us with the questions of what is this? Where am I? How did I get here? And we're not, a, we're not even thinking for a second, that's us up there. Looking down through this mini micro being with the very question of analyzation. We're analyzing our greater selves above, outside of ourselves, through this being. This is, this is what God is doing. It's energy the universe witnessing itself. If there wasn't a conscious person, like I said, this would all be pointless. Nobody to witness any of this or to experience it or to analyze it or to define it, which is what we're doing. We're reading, writing books about it, making videos, awakening people. 
This is the nature of being it. And we're only reminding ourselves of who we are, of, of, of this reality. We are God. We are this being of energy. This is what consciousness is. We're only reminding ourselves. Because not only are we tricking ourselves through the, the veil, the character, but as I said, there's the matrix. The world all around us outside, the Instagram, the trending world, the, the celebrity world, the politic world. These are all avenues that pull you outside of yourself and also classify and divide the people amongst different, different classes, different, different standards, different ones above the other, ones below the other. They're all dividing the people from themselves. So we're fighting ourselves and we're only fighting ourselves. And he's no more right than she's right, and she's no more right than he's right, and vice versa. Neither side is any more right than the other because they're ignorant to the fact that they're being divided, period. The divide and conquer method only works if the, the two on each side are still bickering amongst each other. If they're not aware they're being divided, then they're, they, they're, it works. They're confined, they're obedient. They're thinking of this side as wrong and that side is wrong and they will never coexist. They will never see eye to eye. They will never be one. This is what we're doing. We're being magnificently divided amongst ourselves, especially through religions. And what we don't realize is all religions are talking about the same thing. They're all speaking in metaphors, but they're all coming to the same realizations that all is one. And we are this being. And yes, they give you metaphoric terms. They speak in metaphors. So the average person who's reading it does not see through the lines. Does not read between the lines. <clears throat> That's why they speak in metaphors. The average... The, the, the person that the Bible is meant for is for the person that will read the Bible and take it all literal for what it's saying. So people who, who read the Bible and take it literal think that the Bible actually is referring to talking snakes. The forbidden fruit is an apple. Wrong. They're speaking in metaphors, so the average person is taking it literal. There's coded messages inside the Bible. It's speaking through metaphors. We most know that the Kundalini is the snakes. And it's you only talking to yourself, awakening yourself. And the forbidden fruit that you're eating, the apple, is DMT, the spiritual molecule, which, which is forbidden because it's you realizing that you are God, you are Christ. And that kundalini rising is you realizing, boom, Christ consciousness, it's you. And when you make that connection, you almost have a nuclear bomb go off in your mind. Explosion, boom. Because it's in this moment you're realizing... I am that I am, and all is you. Everything outside of yourself is a part of you. Not the part of you that's behind the veil, because the part of you that's behind the veil is no different than any other person. The illusion. We're all connected through the subconscious. The spirit. And the spirit is none other than the energy granting us consciousness. We're the universe experiencing itself. And as I said in my last live, <clears throat> every few hundred or so years, this knowledge comes out in full effect to where it, it awakens the mass of people. And what happens is those mass of people become attacked by the elite and other people and they become wiped out just like all ancient civilizations have been wiped out who hold the knowledge of the third eye. The Egyptians were all murdered. These, these civilizations who, who held the knowledge of the third eye had to be wiped out in order to create control, in order to create obedient workers. 
if you know who you are, your third eye is open, then you can't mentally be enslaved to the system. They need people who will be mentally enslaved. This is how, this is why they've done what they've done. Three generations changes history. You can change and, and erase history. You kill the grandparents, you enslave the, the parents, and then you teach their kids. And then in three generations, you just erase history. And these people have no idea who they are. No idea what the third eye is. No idea that they're anything other than the character. And through this, they're mentally enslaved into the matrix forever. If this knowledge ever gets lost, then the only way out will be themselves. Through meditation, through the natural way, not DMT. DMT is, is basically a hacker's way. And yes, I use DMT. That's how most people do it. But it's still considered a cheat. Most Zen, most Buddhists, they meditate and they find the answer. But to me, most people should experience DMT because you're physically seeing yourself beyond the veil. You're seeing the light, the energy, beyond all things. And this is when you realize no man can define or give an indefinite shape or, or, or definition to what anything is around us. Because this is what God is, this energy. We can't define it. We can't write a book on it. We can't draw a pattern of it. We can't do anything justice for it. It's everything we can't define that we are. Everything we know already that we cannot define is who we are. And this is why when you sit in front of a mirror and you define yourself, you know, you look at your arms, you say, whatever, you're defining yourself. I've got nice arms. I'm this tall. You know, I, I, I want to slim this down. I want to, you're defining yourself through, through the, the physical veil. Nothing wrong with that. But you can't get, get lost in the assumption that that's who you are in the mirror. Strictly who you are. Because majority of you is not the body. The 90% of your subconscious is the universe trying to awaken your conscious being. And, and every time we, we have these patterns throughout our day, or we say, oh, this was a sign from the universe, it's none other than a sign from yourself from your subconscious self trying to awaken your conscious self. We've got a conscious and a subconscious part of our part of our, our, our brain. We're only aware of the one conscious part, which is a part of the character. So universal phenomenon that happens, universal signs from the universe, is that subconscious part of you, the one above, the stars, the moon, the universe, trying to send signals to your conscious being to, take, to, to allow you to take a moment to stop and realize that you're sending yourself messages or, or trying to awaken your conscious self and just kind of say hi. Remind yourself that you're not the character. Not to get lost and consumed into the, to the character. So many people get lost in the character. And this is how many people choose to go bad instead of good. I'm going to wrap up my video with this. In the Batman movie, he even says, and this is, this is exactly what it is, because there's so much evil going on. You either live long enough, or you, you die the hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And what that means is, just that. There's so much evil in the world that you're either going to die short as the hero because the hero doesn't live past a certain age. The hero dies, so you die short a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. Meaning you, you, you gave in to the evil. You allowed it to, to swallow you, to consume you. You had a good heart, but you, you went bad. This is what the Batman movie was about and when they're saying this. The Joker wanted to prove that he could take the best and good-hearted man and turn him bad, turn him evil. And this is all life is. It's a test. Will you, will you give in? Because yes, evil is all around. There is evil unexplainable happening right now. But it's beyond our control. 
You only think you're making an influence by exposing, by posting these things. However, it makes no physical difference. Bringing awareness doesn't help the problem. Many people won't like to hear that, but it's true. The f we must make a physical change. Sharing things online doesn't make physical change. We must break these old habits of doing the same thing over and over again. Insanity. And let go of all we have no control of. Realize there is just as much good as there is evil. You're only choosing to dwell on the evil. And it is easy to kind of focus and dwell on the evil. Because some people are empaths. Some people feel pain greater than others. Some people can sense pain. However, it's still a choice. You're choosing to see what you will. You're choosing to focus on what you will. You're in control of what you think, your own thoughts, your own mind, what you give attention to, what you give your energy to, what you pay attention to. If you're choosing to pay attention to people's heads getting cut off and people being shot and people fighting and this is the video content you are watching, you're absolutely right. The world is horrible. The world is absolutely horrible. Miserating. Terrible. God, what a place to live. Awful. Absolutely horrible. We can't dwell on things and allow it to affect ourselves if we have no control over them. We must accept and let go of things beyond our control. And it's not the answer some people want, but it's the reality. It's, it's you feeling you have control, which is the ego. Only the ego feels it has control. We must realize and let go. We have no control. The only thing we have control over is inside of ourselves. You don't have control over anything going on outside of you. So you can have an absolute war zone going on outside of you. You can sleep under a bridge. You can be homeless. And many people have seen this, but there are homeless people beyond happier than millionaires. Because happiness is a, a state of mind. It's not a place. It's not a car. It's not a, a thing. It's not a material. It's your mind state within yourself. Are you content with who you are? Are you content with who you think you are? Or are you running from yourself? Only you know the answer. Only you can save yourself. There, most people don't want to believe this because it's the ego again saying no. I just saw one comment say no. But yes, there is just as much love and good as there is evil and hate. We've only studied the hate. We've only studied the evil because we're studying the government. We're studying the elite. So all we know is their tactics, their indoctrination, their hate, their programming. Once you've broken free from that, stop dwelling in it. Once you've broken free from that, you are now liberated from the mental matrix. You are now liberated from this emotional attachment. Therefore, you cannot be affected or controlled and influenced through externally by it. That's what they're doing. They're having us dwell in all this crap to only feel the world is garbage. This is nothing. This is horrible. This is not the case. They're, they're making you think these things. They're making you. And this is why he says... You will either die the hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain because you're choosing to dwell in evil. You feel like you have to face it all yourself and you cannot do that. One can simply not take on all the evil in the world. You must control only what's around you and most importantly what's inside of you. 
What's inside of you will bring you your happiness. This is where your happiness comes from. And in in turn, you reflect outward heaven. Heaven, here and now. You're creating, you're manifesting heaven here and now. For everybody around you. We must realize there's always going to be murder, rape, as nasty as it comes. And it is terrible. But if it's not in front of you, if it's not around you, you have absolutely no control. It will always be. And you will have to realize you will drive yourself mad thinking you can control everything outside of you. I'm not saying one doesn't feel for that person. One doesn't feel the pain and anger. But one cannot do anything about it. If it was in front of me, you're damn right I could do something about it. I would do something about it. But this is why I'm saying, be consciously aware we are creating our heavens, our hells. We're giving our energy... And focus into negativity, into hate, into how we're being enslaved. Once you're physically or you're mentally aware that you're being enslaved, you should totally detach from all the negativity. You don't go further into it because then you're going to dwell. You let go. You realize that there's a greater plan. But you're now freed from that emotional attachment. And the emotional attachment is what influences your mind, your emotion, your state of being. You're depressed and you don't want to eat. This can affect you in many ways. But at the end of the day, what we don't realize is we're only battling our own self. It's all a part of the mind. It's all in the mind. In this constant battle of angels and demons clashing, these two energies going back and forth, is nothing other than tug of war inside of the mind, back and forth, good and bad, angel and demon. It's been used in movies all throughout throughout time. Angel and demon on a shoulder is literally the one inside of your mind, the conscience that's speaking to you. And it's you the whole time. You're only battling yourself. We're only overcomplicating the the situation. Not to mention, we're taking this far too serious. Far too serious because we're, we're being confined through temporary fears. We're feeling that we have to have control over our fate, over, over this, over that. We must be in control. We must be in control every step of the way. At one point, do you let go and enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey? Simply live. And I I know this better than anybody because I've even admitted this on my own page. But it took me about 18 years of giving myself to books and videos and insanity before I realized I was only fighting myself. You're only prolonging what you already know. You're only putting off what you already know. If you're not ready to awaken, then you're going to dive back into more books and more uh, uh, government gossip and, and, and conspiracy stuff. If you're not ready to awaken, then you've got to play the game a little longer. And so you're going to dive back into government conspiracies and you're going to keep exposing what they're doing because you think you're getting to the root. But what you're doing is you're only playing the game a little longer because you're not ready yet. You need to drive yourself a little more insane first. Or whatever it is you're researching. But when one's coming to the realization of themselves, one must realize you can't use pure logic. You cannot use pure common sense and logic because your common sense is flawed in this area. Your common sense will tell you you're nothing other than the body. And this is why so many scientists turn atheists. They don't, they don't realize it's themselves the whole time. Scientists 
are literally overthinking the whole equation. They're overthinking the simplicity of themselves. Scientists study and define the entire single, the whole fucking universe. And they think they have an understanding. However, they're only prolonging themselves. They've not learned one thing about themselves, yet they've defined everything outside themselves. And it, it's due to this reason that they become atheists. They've searched the entire universe up and down, driven themselves mad, what you, whatever, what have you. And they come to the conclusion of they're atheists, no God. Because they've never once looked within. It's the people who are defining everything outside of themselves, thinking with pure common sense and logic that are overthinking themselves. This is what we don't realize. What we're seeking is right where we're looking out of. That's how simple it is. That's why I love what the Hindus say. If God was going to hide, he'd pick a, a person, a, a man, because it's the last place man would think to look. It's very true. You're not going to think to look inside your own self. You're, you're looking out trying to discover and explore and analyze everything around you. So at what point are you going to actually question your own self being it, being this being? You, you, chances are you won't. That's why it's so magnificent. You're fooling yourself. You're playing a magnificent game of hide and seek. But um, thank you. I'm, I've got to wrap this video up. Thank you to everybody who shares my, my video content. Um, it helps. Helps get me a lot of views. Uh, thank you for letting me speak on, on your page. And um, if anyone got any comments or questions, please feel free to inbox me.